Okay, so now let us see here uh, about uh, the beta lactam antibiotics we have. So there are four groups of them, the major groups we have. Penicillin, cephalosporin, campanim and the monobactams. So penicillins we have following categories. So we have penicillin G, V which come under natural penicillins. Then as per the source we have classified penicillin. So the one which are natural, the one which are semi-synthetic and the one which are the synthetic one. So when we talk about the natural penicillins which are penicillin G and penicillin V and the one which are semi-synthetic is oxacycline, you have cloxacillin, methicillin, ampicillin, amoxicillin, right? They all come under semi-synthetic. Now, as per the route of administration, the drugs that you can give orally, amoxicillin, ampicillin, penicillin V, cloxacillin, but the drugs which can only be given per enteral, they are penicillin G, methicillin, carmicillin. Now, as per the spectrum of effect, your methicillin, oxacillin, they are more narrow spectrum, but Ampicillin, amoxicillin, we know are very broad spectrum drugs. Now, as per the resistance to enzymes, so what happens? There are many bacteria that develop resistance to penicillins, right? So, why these bacteria develop resistance to penicillin? Because they are producing beta lactamase enzyme. And this beta lactamase enzyme is going to break down beta lactam ring which is present in the penicillins. So that means the penicillin cannot act on them. So they become beta lactamase resistant bacteria. So to kill those bacteria, we have another higher level of penicillins which are there like methicillin is one of them. Nephicillin, oxacillin, they are all beta lactamase resistant penicillin. So, they are able to kill those bacteria which are producing the beta lactamase enzyme. However, the drugs which we more commonly used, the broad spectrum one, ampicillin, amoxicillin, penicillin GV, they are not resistant to the beta lactamase enzyme of the bacteria. Now, as per the resistance to the acid, again the penicillins are being classified. So, the penicillins which are acid stable, so acid stable penicillins are those which you can give orally because they will not be destroyed by stomach acid like penicillin V, ampicillin, amoxicillin. They can be all given orally, acid stable. But those penicillins which are destroyed by stomach acid, you cannot give them orally otherwise they are not going to be effective. So these are the ones which can only be given IM or IV by parenteral route like penicillin G, methicillin, parmacillin. Now if you look at this Flow chart here, we can see the beta lactam antibiotics here. I told you the classification in penicillin, cephalosporin, campanim, and the monobactam. So, campanim and monobactam, they are more newer antibiotics that we have as compared to other penicillin. Now, for the cephalosporins, they are divided into four generations we have until now the first generation, second, third, and the fourth generation. So, mainly what we use these days is definitely the third and fourth generation that are most commonly be used. So first generation were the oldest cephalosporins that were being used like cephazoline, cefbroxyl, cephalexin. Second generation is cefachlor, important one, cefiroxine. And the third generation like your ceftriaxone, cefotine, cefixine. And the fourth generation which are the latest one we have is cefepine and cefpyrone. So in a quick look, in the same video again, we can quickly see what are the drugs that are used for treatment of gout. So, gout is a condition in which you have too much of uric acid accumulation. So, the drugs that are used for treatment of gout, the one we have is colchicine, which are the alkaloids. Number two, the NSH drug, anti-inflammatory drugs like naproxen, ibuprofen, indomethacine. The third group we have are the uricosuric agents. Uricosuric agents are those which will increase the excretion of uric acid in the urine, like probenacid is one of them. And the last one, which is very commonly used, is allopurinol. So allopurinol is going to block xanthine oxidase enzyme. And the xanthine oxidase enzyme is actually required to make the uric acid. So if you block xanthine oxidase enzyme, uric acid is not produced. So thank you so much for watching my this video and I hope you like it. 
प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल ऑन यूट्यूब स्टडी हार्ड बट स्टडी स्मार्ट थैंक यू